हेलो एंड वेलकम दिस इज डॉक्टर हरप्रीत कौर असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ इंग्लिश इन गवर्नमेंट गर्ल्स कॉलेज जांजगीर द पोएम दैट आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज रिटन बाय फिलिप लाकिन एंड इज वन ऑफ हिज फेमस पोएम्स दैट इज टोड्स द टाइटल ऑफ द पोएम टोड्स गिव्स यू एन इम्प्रेशन और सजेस्ट दैट इट्स रिटन ऑन एन एनिमल और एन एम्फीबियन नो बट टोड हीयर इज यूज एज अ मैटर फॉर फॉर वर्क it's to represent the pressures of the world and how work and obligations are always there uh, so larkin wrote toad in the year 1954 and it was published a year later in his second collection that is the less deceived uh, this poem is really very interesting and i will try my best to make it clear with the help of this lecture so now let's uh, know something about the poet Philip Larkin Full name Philip Arthur Larkin He was born in Coventry England in 1922 He earned his BA from St John College Oxford and after graduating Larkin undertook uh, professional studies to become a librarian Now we'll see the techniques which are used in the poem so 36 lines poem and is divided in nine stanzas that is separated uh, further into sets of four lines known as quatrains uh, these quatrains have no specific pattern or rhyme scheme uh, it's like shakespearean sonnets uh, that is a b a b c d c d e f e f g g there are use of metaphors uh, as we have seen in the title itself uh, the word toad here is uh, Uh, is used as a metaphor for work there are anaphoras repetitions or alliterations in the poem as we see in the stanza 3 the words such as louts lecturers losers lispers etc rhythm larkin also makes use of different patterns the stressed and unstressed syllables migrate from first to second position and often times there are extra syllables at the end of lines there are rhetorical questions which are asked in the first stanza as why should i let the toad work quite on my life can't i use my wit as a pitchfork and drive the brute off so the result of this is that the reader is inclined to agree with what he is saying the choice of his words next is it's particularly very effective when he is describing poor people lifestyles for example the words uh, the tin sardines and eat when fall now uh, we begin with the main part of the lecture the uh, poem here begins with uh, the speaker describing that uh, there is one thing that plagues him more than anything that is a uh, toad so uh, in this uh, on this slide we are having two images the first image is of a man and especially that is a modern man who is carrying a heavy load uh, of toad on his back that is work so he want to get rid of his uh, get rid of this toad so he is asking a question can't i use my wit as a pitchfork and drive the brute off wit here uh, means uh, his mind or his brain and pitchfork is particularly a weapon which i have placed here in the, between these two images you can see the slide so uh, the speaker is expressing his feeling he is asking in a question that can't he use his mind or his brain as a pitchfork as a weapon and try to uh, get rid of this toad uh, now in the next stanza Six days of the week it soils with its sickening poison just for paying a few bills that's out of proportion. So the speaker in this stanza describes the six days of the week that the toad of work plagues him, right from uh, Monday to Saturday in continuation he is working and that has soiled his life, his thoughts, his emotions, and uh, we can see we can feel a kind of frustration in this stanza. Uh, so he has used the term here, sickening poison. That means it has poisoned his life. Further, his work is uh, not bringing him benefits. just for paying a few bills it only allows him to pay a few bills it can be electricity or telephone bills or the household bills 
so uh, uh, that's out of proportion here means that uh, he is uh, working so hard but he is not paid or he is not getting in the same ratio so he is not satisfied with his life the next stanza is lots of folk live on their wits lecturers lispers losers loblolly men louts they don't and as paupers in this stanza speaker insert a number of examples of people that larkin sees as living off their wits rather than depending on poisonous work so the speaker is a bit jealous of these sets of people uh, he is giving an example of lecturers who use their brains and passions to make money you can see the image of one of the lecturer uh, further he goes on to refer to lispers then uh, losers loblolly men louts uh, the losers are the worthless people and clowns and drunken people so he looks to this group of examples of those who are worse than him but still they managed their life and uh, they don't have to carry the weight of the poisonous stool as the speaker has to now in the next slide uh, slide the comparison is made with poor people there are many people the speaker thinks that who live up lanes who live on uh, the roads who don't have uh, the shelters so they don't even have their kitchens their shelter so they have to lit up fire in a bucket and they have to cook their food in the open air uh, i have given the image uh, of them as on the slide so what they eat they eat windfalls and tin sardines windfalls uh, windfalls whatever fruit they are getting with the windfalls just like apple etc and tin sardines here are the tiny fishes which are easily available for these kinds of people and uh, though they don't have shelter they don't have kitchen still these people are very happy with uh, what kind of food stuff they are getting they are happy in their life the next stanza is connected uh, with this uh their nippers have got bare feet their unspeakable wives are skinny as whippet and yet no one actually starves so the people who live up lanes have nippers nippers here is referred to children so they are so poor that they run around without shoes they are not having enough money to uh, wear slippers on their feet so uh the next line their unspeakable wives he mentions undescribable wives of these poor men because uh, they are so ugly they are so thin uh, further a uh, simile is used here to compare the wives uh, with the whippets whippets are kind of uh, whippets are a very small thin breed of dog so uh, i have given the image of whippets on the slide also so these are compared with the the wives are compared with the whippets and yet no one actually starves from the speaker's perspective these people although they are without homes or dependable sources of income still they are very happy and uh, further the poet says that no one actually starves to death koi bhi bhooka nahi marta now uh, the next stanza ah were i courageous enough to shout stuff your pension but i know all too well that's the stuff that dreams are made on so in the next stanza uh, that is stanza 6 uh, the speaker says that he is not brave enough to or he is not daring he is not brave enough to throw off the pensions that is given to him by the government because he know that uh he better know that the stuff that dreams are this is the stuff that dreams are made on that uh, mm, uh, he can't get rid of or he can't throw off the pensions because his dreams will be achieved or he can fulfill his dreams only by these pensions next uh, stanza 7 uh, for something sufficiently toad like squats in me too its hunkers are heavy as hard luck and cold as snow the speaker here goes into the true nature of the problem 
there is the first toad that rests on his body representing work this speaks his inability to move beyond the societal rules and purposefully break away from the capitalist system of the day now in this stanza he depicts toad as being heavy as hard luck and in the last line it's as it's cold as snow in the eighth stanza the speaker here in this stanza uh, first uh, let me read these lines and will never allow me to blarney my way of getting the fame and the girl and the money all at one sitting so the speaker here in this stanza uh, he is giving the reasons of doing excessive work as the uh, toad that rest on his body will never allow him to blarney blarney means uh, in hindi we can say uh, chaplusi karna so uh, he has to do hard work so uh, he has to do hard work for achieving uh, three things in his life that a uh, ordinary or a person uh, in general a man dreams of that is to get the fame the second is to get the girl and the money so he can't get these three things without doing any work or or uh, all at one sitting now uh, this is the last stanza mm, i will go through the lines i don't say one body is the other one spiritual truth but i do say it's hard to lose either when you have both so in the final stanza the speaker addresses the general issue that plagues his life that is the two toads so uh, these are the two toads uh, the two toads are the the pressures that exist within a speaker as he struggles to free himself so the poet is uh, expressing his feeling that these two toads are bound up with each other and if he is trying to get rid of any of one so he can't that will make his life more difficult because they are existing together at the same time so uh, this was uh, the poem and now i will uh, conclude this with the main idea and theme of the poem the main theme of the poem is work comparison is made between toad and work uh, then comparison is further made between the life of modern man and poor people and the other sets of other groups of people uh, the uh, speaker expresses a bit jealous he is a, a bit jealous of lecturers as he feels that he is exploited and paid less in compared to uh, the lecturers losers lispers and louds for the poor people are more happy in their life the poet feels that how happy he would have been if he, if he was a poor so uh, the speaker has to lead a miserable life and he feels that poor people are more happy in their life and they are quite satisfied uh, further he uh, says that no one actually starves to death next is existence of two toads uh, so there are two toads or the pressures that exist within a speaker one is external and the other is internal his voice the last and the concluding and final statement of this poem or the lecture that is toad is inescapable nobody or the modern man or the speaker can't escape or get rid of this toad so uh, with this i end my lecture so thanks for listening me carefully thanks a lot